Okay. Um, so how have you been doing with your games? Not too bad. I, 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 I've cla I mean, today was not so good, I think, because I slept really poorly. I had a bad stomachache and I was up all night. Um, so today hasn't been so great. Um, but over the past week, quite well, I, I've been making up a lot of lost rating. And was it yesterday? No, I think the day before yesterday, I played another blindfold game. Um, I do that once in a while on my other account, my blindfold account. Um, which is, I, I find it, I only like to do it in <laughs> once in a blue moon because it's, it's really tiring. Um, but I did pretty well in the blindfold game. The first half I did really well, but then I, I missed a pin later on. Um, but yeah, overall, I think, um, I think things have been going pretty well. Well, yeah, you were going to, to get it back eventually. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's just a matter of time. So you play blindfold too. That that's interesting. Yeah, uh, I saw that you published video. Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't do it too often because I literally cannot see anything, which is weird. Like I don't see anything, nothing. But <laughs> I can still I can still kind of do it though, which is which is the more weird thing, right? <laughs> when when you play blindfold, yeah, do, do, it, do you see I, do you see things? Um. Uh, not the entire board, though. It's like you see chunks of the board. Uh, I don't know yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah, I, yeah I've heard it's... that. Like like a quarter of the board, like a quadrant, or like a little fl like spotlight. And around. not even that clearly. Um, mm. You just kind of know where the pieces are. Uh, mm. And it's true. I mean, um, there's this book, Improve Your Chess, I think it's called, just a, a simple title like that, mm. uh, by... Jonathan Tisdale. It's a great book. I, I, I know the title doesn't look, that doesn't sound so uh, deep mm -hmm. or anything, but it's super deep. <laughs> it treats uh, some very, uh, very interesting topics about calculation, uh, visualization, about how we per perceive the world when we play blindfold. Um, and yeah, it's true. You don't actually see the whole ball in your head. That mm. I think no one does it like that. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> um, it's like an abstraction. You know where the pieces are intuitively. Um, if you ask me where uh, a, 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 the light square bishop is, I can tell you. But still, I don't see the whole position. You kind mm. of see so the relationship between the pieces, which ones are attacked uh which ones are connected or so mm. uh, but not the pieces themselves it's hard to explain really. yeah it'd be cool if there's like a a, a, ch a strong chess player who's also a uh, animator so that they can make like a an animation of what it's like for them to, to see it because you know because it's so hard to describe it as you say so yeah yeah it's probably even hard to uh, mm. to show that yeah. way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It has to be very creative to come up with a way to illustrate that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, well, I've, I've been investigating a bit. <laughs> I, I've been doing some research on uh, the pound levers. Okay. You ask. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah. Well, I've seen some in your own games. Um, in this one, you used it pretty effectively. Um, I mostly found them to be pawn breaks. <laughs> I, I can't really tell the difference. Yeah, uh, yeah because I used, I, I, I've seen the term used in very different contexts. I mean, you know, a pawn break can, uh, well, be aimed at very different goals, um, opening the position against the opponent's king, maybe damaging the opponent's structure that's quite a usual uh thing especially in the context of pound levers i've seen uh i've seen pound levers mentioned a lot uh with this specific use to damage the opponent's pound structure but um usually it's just used as a synonym to <laughs> pound breaks mm. really mm. um Palm breaks are also, well, they're also used to free your pieces when you are a bit restricted. 
uh, it's kind of a theme in many openings, especially in those where you leave the center to your opponent and you make a bomb break to, uh, to just get some freedom for your pieces. The Grunfeld is a good example to chip at the opponent's center. Um, but while in this case, you use one level very well to damage your opponent's pawn structure. I like your approach. I mean, every time in E45 openings, when black plays this seeds too early, D4 is uh, the way to go. You don't really want to delay this that much. Um, so pawn takes, knight takes, bishop d7. This is, I mean, it's uh, solid, <laughs> more or less for black, but it's so sad. Uh, this position is so hard to play because um, black lacks space, and this bishop on f8 is terrible. But how how should should black develop here? What do you think? Um, is this a game where I played the queen f3 and then I attacked on, on f6? Okay, yeah. Um, what should black... I don't know. I mean... I, I built this around computer prep, you know, <laughs> this line. Um, I But I don't actually know what the best move for black is a... Not many people play g6, so I'm wondering possibly g6 here. Um, it better, it might be a better way to um, develop that bishop. Um, Looks better, doesn't it? I mean, um, it's, I, I don't know the assessment objective, <laughs> assessment of this. Uh, it really looks more fight, and bishop on g7 makes way more sense. In fact, there are games where black. Not exactly here, but this setup with the bishop on his seats and the knight coming to the queen side with this bishop on g7. Well, it makes a lot of sense. The rook comes to b8, so there's a lot of pressure on b2, c3. That's what black should be aiming for. Not that he's going to get it, of course, but um, it's definitely the plan. Otherwise, oh no, you play bishop e7 here and you're almost choking. I don't know what, what that bishop is going to do. Um, there are lines, for example, in the filler, I think, where you play rook e8 and bishop f8, but that's in a context where you have pressure against f4, and that doesn't seem likely here. Actually, you play f4, and it really looks like you're getting really, really quickly to an e5 that's going to be so annoying. Um, and black pieces are just too passive to face this. Play rook b8, which makes sense, but still, I don't know if you need to play h3, but it's I, all right. Yeah, yeah. I, computer yeah. likes h3 often. It's either like h3 or king h8, but uh, essentially to some prophylaxis against uh, black playing d5 and bishop c5. Uh, yeah, yeah, you get rid of anything. It's all right. Black can't do much about it. I think he played um, um, h6. Uh, he played c5. He played this anyway oh, oh. with the idea of bishop c6. Okay, maybe it was a different uh, game, unless he plays it later. He ends up playing g6. Um, okay, so he it was, played the okay. pawn lever here. <laughs> and this more or less destroys his pawn structure. He, he should probably go 98 at once instead of taking. But still, this pawn break is... Uh, it's very strong. It also frees some squares for your pieces. Well, like I wanted before. to open up the bishop yeah. and the knight. Yeah, which is another point. Exactly. So D takes me. This just ruins the pawn structure even further. So it's really going your way. Um, but we go quickly through this one because you just crashed here, really. <laughs> uh, and yeah, knight is a knight d5, and this is already looking. You know, this is a very common opening from black at my level like very common happens a lot yeah like it's like one of the most common 
Interesting. And it can be transposed in, in a number of ways. Like uh, I think here in this game, he Black started with knight f6, but you can get a, a similar position. Um, they, they Often they'll start with bishop e7 first, and then knight f6. And I think partly because like... Oh. Um, and I don't think many people play it the way I play it. Like uh, play, first of all, not to castle, but to play knight c3 before castling. And then knight takes c6. S seems a little weird because then I have to retreat my bishop to what seems like an awkward square on d3. But it all just kind of works So, <laughs> so for white. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> um... I guess it's hard to play with black if you don't really know what you're doing very well. I mean, um, you just get a cramped position out of nowhere and you didn't do anything that terrible. Uh, those are the kind of openings I like to avoid. Um, you played b3. Um, this is a bit of a lazy move, I guess. This is really a threat. I mean, it's hard to believe. <laughs> Um, I should have put just knight f6 immediately. Well, you followed it up with knight f6 and queen h4, and that looks huge. I mean, you 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 should probably be able to play right now. Um, it's probably the same as in the game, though. You spend this tempo. On, I, I don't I don't know if black. Can actually do anything about this? Maybe Bishop F5. I don't know. You know me. I'm um, I'm very I'm very safe. I'm <laughs> for, <laughs> too much so sometimes. Yeah, but well, in this case, you're probably not missing uh, any big chances. Actually, you're kind of made you play <laughs> yeah. it anyway. Told um, told me what to do. <laughs> yeah, just forcing you to play the good move. <laughs> um, yeah, this is. Just too much. Something's gonna fall. Well, uh, from here on, you kind of cruise. Um, but yeah, you you made good use of the pawn lever here. <laughs> well, this one um, doesn't really count because I I, I know the <laughs> I know the the ideas in this line. So I always play f4 and then yeah. So. <laughs> It kind of reminded me of this game. I mean, it's it's quite common this uh, in this structure, but this game ball is um This one is a classic. Um, and here C4. Mm -hmm. This is a nice idea because it introduces another possible pawn lever <laughs> in the same structure. And um, I'm going to show it, show it quickly because it's. Not so much the point, but black played quite passively. Apparently, the move was bishop g4, uh, fighting for d4 in a way. Um, but black played it, this turned out to be really comfortable. How should black take on c6 with the bishop or with the pawn? And why? <laughs> That's tough because I don't see the difference. Um... Hang on, hang on. Uh, no, no, that shouldn't matter though. On principle, how do you think black should take? I mean, not going deep into any lines because there's not that much. Well, it, I just, to me, it just seems, I can't even say the on principle thing because it just seems to transpose. I mean, I'm assuming white will recapture if, if bishop takes c6. Um, 
so that it's it's I can't answer that because to me they seem identical in that sense. <laughs> they look at the other thing. Well, yeah, the I don't. The thing is with bishop. Yeah, if you take with the bishop, you you allow the trade. Some more changes. Yeah. He has to allow it though because if he wants to prevent it somehow, he has he has to play something like bishop c two to avoid it in that case your bishop on c6 looks quite good um b takes c6 is a bit more passive um black is a bit cramped this bishop is kind of tied down to c6 for the rest of the game um, i don't know if uh probably bishop takes c6 is the more principled option i mean black is a bit um more restricted he mm. should exchange some pieces um and here white probably didn't play the best but it's still instructive he should play this at once. Um, he castled. Black should probably play c5, even though white is doing fine. Uh, but after 97, we don't have this pawn break, but this other pawn break works just fine. <laughs> no. Uh, you, you said white is doing fine, but black is fine. <laughs> yeah, but black is suffering. No, I meant it, black, is, black is literally fine. Ruben fine. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, <laughs> Black won't be fine yeah. after this. <laughs> he has to change his name. Now. Oops, sorry, that was a mistake. Uh, C five, and everything goes down here from here. I mean, this is not even a real pawn sacrifice. If he takes C bishop B three, and we just get it back immediately with a huge <laughs> position advantage due to the uh, to the better pounds um so yeah the rest of the game again is it's really sad from black's perspective i mean the uh the worst pawn structure and the potential weaknesses just lead to your pieces being bad I mean, you have to hang on to this and that makes you put the knight on c8 <laughs> uh the bishop is stuck on d7 so just with normal moves white is getting the upper hand you don't even need to do anything spectacular here just get the pieces to the center and eventually the better pieces are just uh are just going to be the deciding factor this one's nice because if pound takes i guess you play e5 this time and 94 and apparently c5 should fall apart um f5 well it kind of desperate trying to get counterplay but it can only backfire <laughs> uh white has all the better pieces well the game was extremely long but just this pound break more or less tied black down for uh for good um i mean, black black resisted for a while i mean it went d takes e5 which is looks desperate but if you want to get the knight out of there you more or less have to do it um and yeah this is of course excellent for white um so um let me check okay back to your game then we're going to see some examples which are a bit more complex but i i was interested in this game um again a sicilian where you got a great position out of the opening um i have seeds queen c2 that's a bit strange if you're going to play d4 afterwards because the queen looks more or less misplaced i don't know if you can just play knight c6 here oh uh, no i'm happy with uh, queen c7 is my my move oh you you have it yeah you've seen it before oh yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, D4 now doesn't keep the center together, yeah. so that's this is really good for you. Yeah. Yeah, it's white play it anyways. I mean this is <laughs> this is a bad version of an open Sicilian for white. I mean it's just an open Sicilian where you played C3 and Queen C2, which makes absolutely no sense. Um in fact you should be better at this point, I guess. <laughs> Normally you play knight c3, bishop e3, f4 in an open Sicilian, you don't go c3 and queen c2. So this should be better for you already. Uh, AC. Yeah, so I, I remember after bishop. the game, I think 
Um, it's super subtle, um, but I think A6 in my notes is, it's, it's fine, like it's, it's a good move, but I think it's not optimal by like maybe 10 centipons or something. And I, what I have in my notes is that A6 actually isn't necessary. I think I could just play like G6 or E6, and if knight B5, it's no big deal. I just move the queen, and then eventually I'll kick out the knight with A6 later on. Yeah, he has no pressure. You you can probably get away with a bunch of stuff. E5 might be okay. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I mean, that's what happens. If white doesn't put pressure in a Sicilian, you even get a bunch of good choices. Um, you can even get you you get to choose your setup so freely here. Um, in uh, fact, you. Yeah. Yeah, at my level, I find the vast majority of of white players they don't put any pressure they don't play any lines that put any pressure in the sicilian as white like they'll, they'll play the opusensky like bishop e2 or they'll the, the only time that i i feel any real pressure is um sometimes when people play the sozin or if they play bishop g5 on move six yeah, I think very it aggressive is. Line. yeah mm -hmm. yeah and I've actually changed my repertoire about a week or two ago after spending like months and months going super insanely deep in the, in the poison pawn line against Bishop G five. Oh, that's, the, that's what I used. Yeah. Queen takes B two. No, I went like insanely deep, like, 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 like 35 moves, like, and lots of lines just, but you know, after eventually, even though I, I put so much time into that, um, I just realized that it was, it's too much work just for black to um, stay alive and, and white doesn't have to have nearly as much pressure. So it was just, so I decided to change it. So I don't play uh, uh, E6 anymore. Again, yeah, or even E6, I don't even play E6. Um, I'm, I'm playing Knight BD7 instead of e6 and i actually did a, a bit of a dive into petrosian's game he actually has seven games where he plays knight bd7 as well so you know bishop g5 and then knight bd7 so petrosian is black playing knight bd7 but um but then after that against bishop c4 he plays queen a5 which the engine doesn't love it's it's about plus <laughs> plus 0.9 um, but he has good results with it. He he scored four out of seven um, as black um, against yeah, you know no. good competition. So <laughs> I, I almost thought hmm, <laughs> maybe maybe I just even play queen a five anyways because Petrosian played it in you know all of his games in that line. But I just couldn't because point nine I just can't do point nine. <laughs> <laughs> like point five I might have done it, but uh, point nine is too much I think. Thing is, will your opponents punish it? I mean, you have to be very knowledgeable. They they probably don't even know the line. <laughs> yeah, I know. But if they do, then I kick myself. That's the thing. Like, yeah. then I'm like, why did I purposely go into this when I know it's objectively better for white? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There are many options. So yeah, you can <laughs> you can choose something more solid. Um, so you play these seeds. White's castle, bishop is sent. Just with natural moves, you're going to be more than fine. Yeah, in fact, he goes knight d2, which is uh, ugly. Necessary, maybe, but um, I don't know. I, I, I even want temp on c4 and play knight c3, but of course, that also has to be fine for, for you. It's just too time consuming. Um, you castle, knight 2 to b3, that also looks kind of pointless. I see seeds, h3, you exchange some stuff and play b5, it's all right. It's very interesting that if white just plays random moves and, well, not so much to the point in the Sicilian, he doesn't get an equal position. Sometimes he's just worse. <laughs> and he doesn't need to do anything that crazy to get a worse position. He just has to uh, make random moves that apply no pressure whatsoever. That's more than enough. Um, Bishop B7. So it, it, that, that's good about you playing the Sicilian. If your opponents play like this in many games, then well, that's definitely something you you will get some value out of. <laughs> um, 
F3. Okay. Um, so, what's your plan now? I don't F3 know. As soon as they played F3, I don't know. I just thought, oh, hello, hello, dark squares. Um, <laughs> so, I like, you know, knight h5 even off the top of my head is just like, hmm, knight h5 looks interesting because... I mean, he's got a dark squared bishop, and he has a queen and a knight. But at the same time, I just can't help but think his dark squares are weak over there on the king side, even though he's got three pieces that can. Um... Yeah, but they are. I mean, objectively, they are. He, or his pawns are on light squares. So yeah. That... <laughs> he also really I kills think... his his light squared bishop. That's just completely dead now. Um... I'm trying to think. When white plays f3 in the Sicilian, um, if you can get away with b5, it's definitely the Oh, man. I, Zach just said that right in the now. chat right before you, you said that. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, he said, he, he said yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm opening a little bit more because I could only see the uh, okay. part of the comment. Yeah, there yeah, it is. Yeah. It probably looks quite yeah. nice as well. Yeah, yeah. it does. <laughs> it is. Um, I think it's the right time. And you play Rook ACA, which should be fine. Sorry, I, I played. Um, I played what? If I was... You play Rook ACA. Okay. Yeah, you know, I I, I probably looked at D five, and <laughs> then. Um... I think I did look at Why is it better than... Okay. This one? Yeah. Sorry. No, no. So, yeah. So, w w why is it better than, than what? When the pawn is on F2, of course, if you can get away with D5, that's perfectly fine. But now that you provoke this, uh, this F3, he also has some very weak <laughs> squares. The bishop on E3 is more unstable than before. G3, I don't know. It's just... A mess in dark squares. If you can get this in now with this pawn f3, if you force the disappearance of the pawn on e4, then that has to be great for you. For example, let's say pawn takes, knight takes. Um, yeah, e3 is very unstable. This pawn formation is even funny. <laughs> um, this is not going to go well for him. Um, it's much better. I mean, it's still great for you, but it's it's less terrible with the pawn f2. This pawn f3 favors you even more at the time of breaking the center here. Um, he's he gets a lot of extra weak squares for no reason. Kind of, I I, um, I highlight it a little bit more. Yeah, you play rook a c8. He won queen d2, and this is interesting because you play. <laughs> better late than um, never yeah and it's fine it's fine i mean yeah i think you get away with it i don't know if e5 is a thing um i need to be checked <laughs> sometimes you get your queen trapped with this trick e5 yeah. queen takes and bishop f4 mm -hmm. here you have queen h5 and mm -hmm. looks like you're fine i don't know still Still need to calculate some stuff, I guess. For example, five. Queen takes e5, bishop f4, queen h5, and bishop g5. What do you do there? It's just threatening. I don't know if it's such a big threat. You still have G seats for the queen. Yeah, you might get away with it. Um, yeah, uh, but I even prefer giving up that power and getting some kind of. What, what about what <laughs> about um, what about? Can we go ninety four there? I thought so. Um, maybe you can. Oh yeah, because you have queen takes G five. Yeah. yeah. After f takes e4, the queen is under attack, but you have this. Yeah, mm -hmm. you should be fine. Um, so not even the sacrifice is good enough. Uh, knight takes, bishop f2. You played some principal moves here. Queen e1. 
um what's next what's your aim now <laughs> i mean you played well you played well but in general well you you want to create a new target he has a lot of weaknesses the king side is a mess with this triangle here that shouldn't exist um but you also have the opportunity of playing your standard uh minority attack which is a lever again <laughs> oh that looks um, that looks dangerous here for me to me yeah maybe not right now mm -hmm. but this is gonna happen at some point and he will get another weak pound you did well here because you get one of his bishops he chose give you the most important one <laughs> with bishop d1 you just got to the dark square bishop which he absolutely needs if he's gonna get this structure on the king side mm -hmm. i mean he mm -hmm. needed the bishop on f2 to cover all the weak squares and he gave you that one um takes queen takes wow look at look at his five. clock five yeah he's playing easy <laughs> um it's not going well for him. <laughs> he wins though. um yeah yeah <laughs> um oddly enough he ends up winning this um you play bishop c5 which is fine but Again, here you can use a lever <laughs> with b4. And it's the right time. He doesn't have c4 or anything. If he takes this knight, is going to be hanging in the air. I don't know if queen b6 is all so good. Uh, but you're getting to his bounce anyway. Bishop c5 is fine, though. I mean, f4, now you play b4. You use the lever in any case. b takes c, b takes c and oh i think i blunder this is in a few moves from yeah. here and this is fine you take on d4 though i don't really like it i mean i know you're capturing the pound and you're going to win the pound definitely but um man this knight was horrible <laughs> it's it's just uh just won't have any squares and your bishops are huge I don't know if you just get your bishop out of there, let's say to be seeds. Um, I don't know what, what's he gonna do with this pawn. Um, bishop f3, bishop f3. You think I, I should just trade and then take on? On c3? Yeah, you can win this pawn just by this, I guess. And it's similar, but you are winning. Oh, sorry. It seems to be my phone. <laughs> oh, the one we're watching you from? Okay. Which is also my camera. Oh, my God. Um, Your bishop is just going to be much better than that knight. Still, I mean, th this is still fine. You should be able to pick up a pawn here and it's much better for you but again it's um it's gonna be a heavy piece and game a pound up it's comfortable but it's always harder to win if you still keep the advantage of having the better minor piece it's probably better i don't know if three we just just comparing those two positions um you even have this bishop uh, against this knight, which is, if the knight doesn't have good outposts in the center and it's just uh, trying to get a grip somewhere, it's not a good piece. And the ball is completely open and this bishop is going to be better probably. Um, well, still, the game wasn't decided because of that. I mean, you, you're picking up a pound here and, well, you even get the h3 pound and he still keeps all his weaknesses, but you missed oh this, one, this is what i remember yeah 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 i remember now yeah queen c3 was maybe a bit careless i mean queen f5 looks just the easiest probably yeah i, I there's no f5 nothing to worry about 
yeah, I don't, I don't want to make excuses. Um, but yeah, part of this was because uh, he was playing so quickly and I, I got just under four minutes um, after this move. And so I, I started to be a little worried because he, he was moving so quick. I didn't, and there's no increment. Um, so I, I, I got a little rushed there, but still I had plenty of time to avoid this, this mistake though. It's putting pressure on the clock. <laughs> Um, yeah, and it, it's incredible how it goes out from here, but because it's really tough. Um, actually, Queen takes d4, even loses, apparently. Um, I think he, he still takes. And he oh. Yeah, and then he takes. Yeah, yeah. yeah and it's so annoying. The, the rook is hanging here, and he, has, he takes f7. Um, yeah, things changed <laughs> a lot. Um, and still, it should be fine, isn't it? I mean, bishop d5, check, rook f5, you exchange here. It's, it should still be okay. But you, well, you were really down on time also. So, this is, I mean, clearly a drawback. Um, Uh, I, uh, now I remember how it ended. <laughs> um, it's not really important. You have a minute here. And you're oh, God. Don't, don't, I remember uh, now. Oh, yeah, this was bad. Yeah. <laughs> this final blunder was really yeah, bad. Yeah, you played that instantly. Yeah. yeah. You just draw with this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, other than that, you were better for the most just, part of the game. It's <laughs> just not a move you will expect him to... Like you don't expect him to just leave that pawn. So <laughs> I forgot that I could just take it. <laughs> yeah. You had it on three move almost. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I, I want to check out this game now. We're going to see um, pawn levels that are a little bit more subtle. Uh, I'm not going to go through the whole game, but just, let's just put this position. It's white to play. Well, you know, the first move that comes to mind, whether it's good or not, is c5, right? So c5 just looking to temporarily or maybe not temporarily just give up a pawn to destroy black's uh queen side pawn structure but let me just see what that might look like. so okay so let's just say c5 um and you know bc dc bishop takes um c5 Not seeing the compensation yet. You know, we're so <laughs> close to taking on E5. Um, Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't see uh, I don't see the compensation for that. Um... This is probably a new pattern for you, but yeah, this is a pawn break designed to wreck the opponent's structure, uh, and it is a pawn sacrifice. For now, it's I mean it's it's even hard to call it a real sacrifice because you're going to get your pawn back real soon. Uh, but instead of taking here, how about leaving him with the worst structure you can think about? Let's take on e5. 
we just made him take here first and now we change everything on e5 and let's see what happens to this pawn structure we take everything on e5 simplify yeah there's no, there's no way he can hold that yeah this pawn is lost essentially and after that black will have this weakness which will be tough to defend once c5 disappears, your pawn structure is going to be way more compact. You will have free pressure on the c7 pawn, and black will have to defend. No, I mean, if I... So just, just like that. No, I mean, if I had um, considered d takes e5, I, I, I'll play that. I don't have... You don't have to uh, sweet talk me. I, if I had considered d takes <laughs> e5, I, I will do that. I mean, I, I can certainly see the, the merits of it. <laughs> it's looking great. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. And this game is really clean. Uh, this game by Flo. He even plays. I mean, Rook AC1 looks natural. He plays Rook FC1. Um, That's what I would I, I would choose. Really that fast item. The reason is Queen G5. Mm. Queen takes C5. Well, for now, this is not a thing. Black has to get some color play going. I mean, it's changing and allowing the doubling of the rooks is just sad. Um, so black more or less goes all in. <laughs> um, and he takes on a seven. This is just really cool. <laughs> and after bishop takes h three, the wait. reason why oh, he okay. played the f rook. That's the reason why he played the F-Rook. Now mm -hmm. he has Bishop F1. <laughs> Just like that. Uh, much better than Bishop F3 because now you threat, you even threaten F4 now. So so that almost compels Black to, uh, to make an immediate decision. It's not easy. Um, the eight pound is just too fast. C7 is falling. The attack is not nearly enough. Um, Black drive queen g6 with obvious intentions. <laughs> he wants to play rook g5. What do you think the most practical choice is here? How do you just kill off any kind of color play by black? Probably. Well, I, I don't want to say that word. Um, I was thinking G3. Um, we, we have a queen and a bishop to help contest those light squares. I'm slightly worried about the H file, but he has to, I mean, we, we can we can flee, you know, F1, E2. So I think, I, I don't know. Uh, G3 seems, I, I don't see how he's going to attack us after G3. You might get away with it. I mean, I'm, it, it might be possible. Not practical though. <laughs> uh, What's wrong? What's wrong know, with G3? Bishop take... Okay, Bishop takes yeah, F1. Yeah, G3, Bishop takes F1. Uh, King takes F1. King takes F1. I don't know if queen h6, rook, I'm, ro I'm into rook h5 and queen g6 most likely. I don't know which one. Um, I don't really know if we should be allowing this kind of stuff. <laughs> I mean, you can just keep it really safe. I mean, you're not up a pound, but... Um, it almost feels like you are. <laughs> the C7 pawn is weak. The A pawn is strong. It's probably just going to advance. So what's the easiest way of just killing off any kind of counter play on the king side?
I don't know. To me, it's not obvious. I mean, I, I keep looking at taking on c7, but that doesn't seem any... It doesn't seem that much better than g3 to me. Because, um, like, queen c7, rook g5... Um, it seems similar. I mean, I, I, and then I guess then we could play g3. If I can't play g3, I guess I would go queen take c7, but it doesn't seem... It doesn't seem simpler to me but yeah if there's another move i i don't see what would be really simple <laughs> i don't see what it is well you just gotta reduce the attacking potential and rook c5 is probably simplest um i mean just by removing the rook side don't think black has much. <laughs> um, probably doesn't have anything else to try. I mean, after rook takes, wing takes. Uh, um, he can defend the pawn. He's not even down a pawn, but the a pawn is advancing. The c7 pawn is just fits weakness. And, and yeah, this pawn can get all the way to a7. And that's too much. It's not even about getting an extra pawn anymore. It's just about uh, pushing the past unprotected pawn. Well, this is kind of desperate, but it's an idea. <laughs> uh, A5, H4. And just within the five, we're not going to allow this, of course. We have Bishop B5, F5, A6. Bishop e4. Well, tactics are always important. White had to foresee this. So there's nothing there. Bishop b7. f5, sorry. Queen e7. h3. Oh, this was just good calculation by White. Bishop e4. What do we do now? Can get dangerous. It still can be dangerous, but this was just well calculated by White. I have an idea in mind. I'm just, it is dangerous. So I, I'm, <laughs> there's a lot of lines to calculate too. Yeah, the, the, I'm looking at queen d7. It So far it seems to pay off. There's queen d7, if bishop f5, we have queen takes c8. And um, bishop takes c8, then just a8 queen, um, and we're, we're protected on g2 already. And instead of bishop f5, after queen d7, um, if, let's say, say h8, h takes g2, then... I guess we take on c8 check, king h7, then we have queen h3 check. Um, and so that, that's fine. And if if after queen d7, if, if bishop takes g2, um, that one is a little trickier. Okay, so queen d7, bishop takes g2. Yeah, uh, queen takes c8, king h7. That's that's the tricky line, but but I think we we're still okay there. I think we could then maybe play king h2. Um, that's a king h2, queen d6 check. F four, 
<risa> de Pollux. <risa> Es Queen D2, though. <laughs> queen D2. I'm trying to remember where my queen is there. Is it still on C8? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. Um, okay, so Queen D2. Is that check? No, he has a bishop on G2. Right? No. Let me find that again. Um, he has a bishop on G2. He yeah. does? Yeah. The queen two. Yeah. Okay. So I don't even really, I mean, okay. There's a discovery, but, um, okay. Let me think the annoying thing is his wait, queen D two. Can't I just give a check? Then the, he moved his queen. Then I can go queen F five, queen F five check. You have queen F five. Yeah. And then you have this stuff. Yeah, it looks yeah. like it. <laughs> but yeah, that, that was probably the most challenging. I mean, just taking here um, doesn't quite work, but still. Um, Black drive rook a8, which is certainly losing. We just take yeah, h3. Yeah. And, yeah, that's the easiest. And this is just sad. I mean, queen d7. Um, try this end game and it's it's just losing of course uh um rook a5 threat and should take hitting the bishop so bishop e4 f3 bishop b7 and the finish is nice rook takes rook takes and rook c7 <laughs> and the pin is annoying <laughs> yeah it's not allowing black to yeah. to get out we still need to be careful because there are some intermediate checks. So king h2, so there's no check here. In h8, so that this isn't a thing. Now we have to be more or less accurate. What should white play now? So I don't want to go bishop d3 because then there's rook c, uh, rook a3. So I'm wondering if I can do this on a different diagonal. Um, oh, bishop b, bishop b5. <laughs> That's the man. There's yeah. no way of threatening the bishop. Yeah. Because we take and mm -hmm. we protect it. And we just threaten this. So well, apparently the last move was this and black resigned. I don't know. Some, sometimes <laughs> this happens. <laughs> That's weird, eh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They make the move and resign immediately. Okay. Um, but yeah, it was all about the weaknesses that Black acquired after that pawn break. And that's uh, that pattern is more common than you might uh, guess. Um, this is from a game, Gelf and Karpov. Actually, Gelfand held this, which is incredible. It's just that he's a strong player. <laughs> uh, it looks like Gelfand is getting in some kind of trouble here. Karpov just... Um, uh, sorry, yeah, Karpov is getting in some kind of trouble because after b4, uh, White is fighting to get the d4 square for his pieces. So this might already suggest something to you. <clears throat> What was this, like a, a Catalan or? That's a good question. It really yeah. looks like um, Catalan could be. Well, it could be. OK, so how, how we deal with with B4? Could also be a touch <laughs> with Sorry, which one? No, oh, no. Uh, I, so I'm looking how how Black deals with B against B4 here. Yeah, B4 looks quite good.
Well, just going with the theme of the day, I'm looking at d4. Um, if e takes d4, then we get almost identical pawn structure of what we looked at in the first example. Um, so d4, e takes d4. Um, not sure how we would want to continue there. Maybe, maybe c takes b4. Um, Yeah, possibly C takes B4. And if D4, let's say he goes, well, I feel like he has to capture it. I mean, okay, let's say he retreats the knight somewhere weird or knight, knight, a, knight a4, let's say. Um, I'll just take on E3. I mean, that seems fine. Um, if if B takes C five, well, no, he can't do that because I'll I'll play E two. So, yeah. So if D four, Knight A four, C uh, sorry, D takes E three, F takes E three, then maybe C takes B four, seems reasonable. Yeah, you end up even winning a bound here, most likely. Yeah. That looks really good. So it's the same idea, same pattern. You don't want to give D4 to white. That would be terrible for instance. D4 is just, yeah, it's terrible. A knight on D4 is a giant. Your bishop is pretty much dead. And this is going to be a target for the rest of the game. White has all the chances here. He has blocked your pounds on light squares, uh, making your pieces quite sad, actually. Um, but see how things turn around completely if you make uh, the pawn break yourself. Your bishop is great now, and you completely ruin white structure. It's funny because it's not even a pawn sacrifice. Now you take the other way, just like um, just as in the last example, you make the pawn break to destroy the opponent's structure, and then you take the other way, which is. Probably the unexpected. Yeah, it's like a, you you zag uh, when they think you're gonna zig. It's a. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the, it's not even a sacrifice. You get the pawn back. Look at those white pawns. <laughs> I mean, what? Yeah, Pac-Man. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. It's just... <laughs> Unfortunately for Kapov and. Um... Good fortune for <laughs> Gelfand. There are not that many pounds. Gelfand actually held. Um, Gelfand held because it's he's a hell of a player. What? What? what, uh, what he played ninety. What year was this? Sorry. Yeah. What year? What year was this game? Oh, nineteen ninety something. Oh, there you go. So yeah, he's past his twenty years past his prime. <laughs> Karpov. That's about before he kind of stopped playing, a few years before he stopped playing, I think, right? Or it, he played in 99, I think, a little bit, right? Karpov did, but... Yeah, he was still quite strong. I mean, um, he was able to mount pressure on the young guns. <laughs> uh, Gerfan plays very well here. He makes this move, which is not that obvious, but that exchange is absolutely necessary. Why is that so? Well, 
I don't know why specifically trading it off is necessary, um, but rook rook b3 seems a little nasty. Yeah, that the the thing is the knight without support is gonna is gonna be kicked around and it will be hard to find a decent square for it because knights need to be supported by pounds near the center i mean the pounds the, the the knight needs to be near the center because they are quite ineffective when they are far away from it uh they are not long range pieces um so oh they need to be around uh the center squares and on c3 just lacks support uh so gelfand thought okay if this knight is going to be a problem because it's just going to be targeted by black pieces you well you said rook b3 for example which is immediately a problem he thought okay i might as well just hit change it and simplifying the position is also good for him here because he's defending this and there are not that many pounds so with its changes maybe he's going to be able to hold i mean it's still a pain <laughs> it's a horrible position to defend but uh, well, he managed to. I mean, there, there are not enough pounds to actually impose uh, the advantage. I mean, I still take black any day. Gelfand plays really well and lets uh, this pound go. He's forcing some exchanges. Um, D5 is most likely going to fall, but this three against this two, most likely a draw in the end. Kapov kept pushing, of course, but it wasn't enough. Um, I takes B. And finally, White got what he wanted. I mean, it's horrible to defend this and all, but three against two on the same side. Uh, one more exchange of rooks, and we're pretty much guaranteed that it's a draw. Well, the, yeah. the game carried on for like 50 more moves. <laughs> 60 more moves, actually. Yeah, we, uh, we got a tag team uh, uh, Rubenstein in for black here. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it, <laughs> well, you can picture Carlton playing this for a win mm -hmm. for like 100 moves and finally even succeeding, who knows? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Karpov tried to his credit. Mm -hmm. I well, you got you to gotta try, uh, right? You got the extra pawn. Yeah, you have no risk whatsoever. Uh, white, I mean, it's still an ugly defense, but I mean, it looked even worse than this, so I guess it's fine. <laughs> it looked like the pounds would just be picked up and that would be it. Still, that d4 followed by c takes b4 was quite clever. Uh, I mean, it, you see the pound break serves many purposes. One of them is blocking one key square in the center. And the other one is just completely wrecking white structure. Um, it's two key ideas that are quite normal to this uh, uh, to this device. Uh, so pushing one pound and what well, sacrificing temporary and taking the other way is quite mm -hmm. uh, quite a normal uh, uh, idea actually. It's one more for your arsenal uh, of positional mm. patterns <laughs> i think that's very easy to miss from the defending side because you got to see it an extra move in advance <laughs> um yeah. yeah yeah it's that, that's exactly it's, it's quite mm. easy to miss mm. um it changes the landscape completely mm. um well finally I, I just wanted to show you this game i don't know if we if we saw it or not um we probably didn't if we if we, well, if we did i if we did i would have if we did i would have forgotten believe me <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, uh, it, it it's actually very interesting even from a perspective of the um of opening theory i mean at the time at least um will be familiar with this game because it's a Tarash, so it's his thing. <laughs> um, so C takes D, E takes D, Knight C3, just the main line Tarash, Bishop G2, and Marshall, quite a visionary, played C takes D4 here, 
he didn't follow up uh, appropriately, but um, but this move has become fashionable <laughs> uh, more or less recently, thanks to Dubov, I think. Um, actually, up to a certain point, it was believed that Bishop e7 was the best move here. We're not going to enter into details, but c takes d4 is very active and very risky too, if you don't know what you're doing. And Marshall, of course, couldn't know because well, just theory wasn't as well developed. <laughs> We're talking about the year, what the year is this? 1912, so can imagine. Uh, Bishop c5. And that's risky already because after knight b3, the, the isolated queen's pawn is under attack. Um, and there's only one way to... I'm just trying to. Not so you said this was 1912. Yeah. 1912. This game. I'm, yes. I, I'm, I was just trying to remember when Marshall played his famous game against Capablanca. Um, was that? I think it was 19. Was it 1914? Do you remember? I Which game? Because well, you know the the famous Marshall Capablanca, the, the Marshall attack. You know. <laughs> oh, that. I don't know which. Oh, yeah. Or maybe 1916. I, so I think it was a few years after this game. Okay. That one, yeah, in which Capablanca just defended. Everything. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I don't know the year of that game, really. Okay. I'll look it up. I don't even know the tournament. <laughs> mm. I, yeah, I just know that he saved it for like ten years. That <laughs> that opening prep, <laughs> like he 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 had the chance to play it against other players, <laughs> but he saved it. No, I, saving it just for Capablanca, and then Capablanca played like engine perfect almost for every single move, which is crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it looked really scary for a long while, but he yeah. escaped. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I mean, there, there's no way Marsha knew this, but. The recently fashionable move is just giving up the pawn for development. And it's quite an advanced idea, really. And the main line goes knight takes d5, black just castles. And this is just an illustrative line, of course. But this has been played with well, good results for black because he's so active. I mean, even though he's down a pawn, it's. Uh, Apparently, there's quite good compensation in the end. Um, the thing is, there's really not a good option. If you want to keep the pawn, you have to play bishop before, but that's uh, uh, too committed from a positional point of view. The bishop is just not well placed on before. It's kind of committed to take on c3, and we don't want to give up the dark square bishop in this context where we have an isolated queen's pawn in the center. And it's on light square. And all the dark squares around the center are just weak. D4 is going to be in white's complete control after this exchange with the pawn on C3. C5 is definitely exploitable. E5, D6 are all squares that can't be effectively covered by black. So, yeah, bishop takes C3 is a really committal decision from a positional point of view. And after white castles, I don't know. I mean, you you kind of have to do it. <laughs> uh, if bishop is six, I guess bishop g5 is annoying with some extra pressure on d5. Um, so Marshall went for it in the hope that he could hang on to this pawn, which is more or less the goal. Um, bishop g5, threatening to win it. Bishop is it still defending it? Um, yeah, the problem is essentially dark squares. Um, knight c5 attacking b7, queen e7, and now unexpectedly, Ruinstein allows the pounds to be. Um, well, in contact again, but they are a couple of hanging pounds now. There are no pounds on the C or F file, so 
Um, they're still a bit weak. And we got the pair of bishops, and it's looking good for white, but he has to proceed with energy. Otherwise, black might just get a rook to c8 and put pressure on our backward pawn on c3. That, that's also a bit dangerous. So what do we do now? What does Rubens do? <laughs> Well, you got to look at e4. I mean, you got to look at e4. So temporarily give up a pawn just to pile up on potentially two isolated pawns on the e-file. So like e4, um, if d takes e4, um, well, we can just take back immediately. And now black has an iso uh, isolated pawn on the e6. By the way, more recently, I I learned I I thought that Isolani was uh, any isolated pawn, <laughs> um, but then oh. I learned it's just it's just the D pawn. Um, yeah. The IQP. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. But yeah, E E four, um, and if Black doesn't take, if Black um, goes D four. Um, D four we Yeah, we can just, just take yeah, yeah. I was also looking at I was looking at E five too, but no, I think we it's easier just C takes D four. And if black ignores it, like E four, let's say rook A D eight. Um Oops, sorry, that was a mistake. <laughs> Well, we still just take it. Um, then just e takes d five. Um, and well, we want a pawn. Well, I guess no. I guess he could then go d takes e five. But then we have bishop takes d five, um, and then we we want a pawn, and we took care of black central pawns. So I don't see what's wrong with that. Um, I'm looking for anything else that black could do after e4 such as h6 but um you just win the game upon the end. what was that yeah you just win the pawn again apparently if <clears throat> yeah we, um, we yeah we still just take on f6 right bishop takes f6 yeah 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 so e4 is very principle it's a good pawn break i think um maybe I, i'm not sure this is the case but maybe rubinstein rejected it because in this line after queen c5 he has to give up one of the bishops not the end of the world probably but still um he has to give up one what about bishop bishop e3 and then what you worried about queen c3 uh but then yeah, we we get a pawn back good. though but then we'd have to give up uh, we'd have to get up um, anyway i was thinking <laughs> then we have bishop c6 but then yeah we have to give up that bishop but our rook would be nice and active though that's not too bad right bishop e3 queen queen c3 um and and bishop c6 immediately i guess and uh bishop c queen takes. oh well still still rook c1 though yeah but you're down a pound for no reason oh did, are we down a pound <laughs> i guess we're down a pound okay yeah we just um, lost this one okay then i i start with rook c1 then so bishop e3 queen c3 rook rook c1 c1 okay Guessing queen e5 should be. I'm not completely sure. I still take white anyway. It's it's not too bad though, right? For white there, you know. Yeah. Yeah. E even if you have to give up one of the bishops, you still mm -hmm. keep 
a bishop, <laughs> which is totally better than that knight. Even if you decide to take like this, I don't know. I, I don't even know which bishop I'll choose. Probably this one. So I, I'll probably play this. And, yeah, that's our good bishop. And it's still very good for you. Um, but if I had to think of a reason, maybe that that was mm. it. Uh, Rubinstein chose this instead. Position it makes sense because you also get rid of your potential weakness on C3. At least if it works. <laughs> so how are we getting this back? I guess That's I guess a big question. Yeah. I guess we're just gonna take on C three. Uh well, it's hard to give away that bishop though. Um <laughs> I don't know if I want to give that bishop up. I mean, on c6, I mean. As it turns out, he did. And this is so hard to do. Uh, I agree. It, it's yeah. hard to play bishop takes c6. Uh, it's just fantastic. I mean, the pawns are destroyed. Again, a pawn break, in this case, followed by this exchange, which completely destroys the pawns. And... It's really not dangerous for us because black doesn't own a light square bishop in any case. And these parts are falling apart actually. <laughs> uh, queen d4. And the queen takes c4. These two pounds are easy to pile up on, especially the c6 pound. There's a difference. I mean, these two pounds are isolated. But c6 is going to be on an open file, so it will be much easier to put immediate pressure again. Um, Marshall plays creatively, though. I mean, he deserves some credit here. What's the point? If queen takes c4, what is he going to play? Queen d5. Queen d5. He's trying to straighten the bounds yet again. <laughs> um, Rinstein plays very, very well again. He gives up the bishop. The remaining bishop. <laughs> again, he, he's interested in just getting this to a heavy piece end. Yeah, or the rook end game, especially. Just... He's like, oh yeah, rook, rook end game, let's go. <laughs> I don't, I don't mind being down a pawn, especially with those pawns as they are. <laughs> yeah, the, the position advantage is just going to be too great. And this bishop might become useless very soon. I mean, everything's going to ha be happening on, on the, on the cent in the center. So um, this bishop has really no work left. And the knight can be annoying, so he just exchanges it. And now he takes the pawn. And we have a very similar situation to the game Flor Landau. This, this uh, isolated pawn on the C file is just going to be a real problem. If you notice, the, these four are, uh, well, they are attached together, and these four are not so great. Um, especially the E and C pawns are a problem. So rook ac1, and this is just terrible. Um, well, I, I don't want to say endgame because there are rooks and queens, but maybe pre-endgame, I don't know. Um, it's just so easy to apply pressure on cc. Um, rook k to f8. Um, Well, we can still take here. I guess we're losing the h of pound. That doesn't make sense. I really like how Rinsden now solves every problem uh, on the king side. And he does it in a very strange way because he starts pushing pounds. I mean, it looks weakening, but we couldn't allow a piece. Well, maybe not a rook, but queen f3. Uh, we shouldn't be allowing pieces into uh, f3. Or this also, now we can defend this on the second rank. 
that was probably the reason for f4 and what else what are we threatening now what are we threatening now that we weren't before mm. just um, a position of threat oh well e5 That'll be rough because the rook has to keep defending the pawn so it can't go back. And if it doesn't go back, it's just gonna get stuck on the king side. Um and for now he might have some cutter play, but it's just easily stopped. It's no big deal. Black didn't want to get the queen trapped on the king side, but this is just probably even worse. I don't know. <laughs> e5. Rook h6, rook c2 is excellent. We don't allow counterplay on the second rank. No way. Check. King g2. Rook d8. Do you take this pawn? No, because as you just said, it allowed counterplay on the second rank. Not with a queen, but with a rook. So queen c6, queen c6, rook c6, and then rook... Uh... Well, rook e2, there is rook f2, but then there's rook takes f2, king takes f2, rook takes h2. Yeah, and there, there's something more scary here, the direct rook d2. Uh, <laughs> you can't okay. take. Uh, I'll, yeah. I'll be scared. I don't know if it works, but yikes. It should work, right? Maybe, maybe we don't allow that. <laughs> that seems to work. Gotta go to f3. Yeah. Um, yeah, but at least uh, there's no reason to allow it. No, no, <laughs> that's that looks terrible. Yeah, because then then I think even just queen c6 might be okay. Rook takes c6 and then rook takes h2 again. Yeah. So Ruistein doesn't want to even try to calculate this stuff. It makes no sense for him. <laughs> yeah. He no. just goes rook f f2 and. That's it. The C pound is at our disposal at any time. Um, so now it has to be defended. But black is effectively down a rook. <laughs> uh, it's not getting back into play like ever. <laughs> rook FD2, and then he's just going to capture some pound. Simple, yeah. H8. Makes it look easy, yeah. <laughs> then it's not, but he makes it look easy. Uh, rook takes his seats and guess that's it. We, we're crashing through the last rank. And yeah, Marshall needs to resign here. <laughs> yeah, it, it's about time <laughs> for for this level. For like sure. he's yeah. gonna force the change of queen. <laughs> yeah, and now if ah, well, if Rubenstein can't win this, there's no hope for anyone. <laughs> This is his ball game. That'll, that'll be new. <laughs> Him not winning yeah. this will be something yeah. new. It's two extra pounds. <laughs> A third one is falling. He, this is what happened in the, in the game? I'm surprised. Rusev was a very optimistic guy. Yeah. yeah I'm just surprised they played. Marshall Ruiz played was this far. Uh, You mean Marshall? Yeah. Yeah, he was very optimistic. <laughs> he kept trying. It, it's really funny because he kept for he kept playing for many moves. Man. This one's great. He calculated to the end that he said. Whoa! I can't believe uh, he's still playing this. Wow. H seven, G five, and G six. <laughs> it takes mm. G seven. And he promotes first. <laughs> and he even played Kini too. It's really funny, but he even went this far. <laughs> and Queen is it, and now he <laughs> uh, But yeah, I mean, that I, I was really surprised the first time I saw this game because that C4 is quite standard. I mean, it's, it's a nice pound break and all, just to. Uh, Again, wreck the pawn structure, but bishop takes his seats. Ouch, that's not so easy to do, really. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. It was said that Rubinstein was very good at uh, 
the transformation of one advantage into another. And yeah, there there was uh, there were other instances where he would give a great bishop just out of nowhere to accomplish um, well another positional goal. Uh, sometimes one that wasn't so obvious, <laughs> um, but yeah, he was very good at that, which was very impressive at the time where he played where he played because um, um, this doesn't look like such a classical player <laughs> uh, um if you don't mind i just want to show you how it'll just be like uh, two minutes um i played a game sure, earlier yeah. today and uh, i just thought i i got a good position and i just wanted to show it to you because i think it it might show how i when i play a game because i mean you're such a very positionally oriented player i think you'll agree that's very much like your style um <laughs> and I just, in my games, I'm, I'm constantly thinking like of, you know, good bishop, bad knight, good, you know, should I make, should I trade? I'm always just thinking positionally, especially with the minor pieces, the bishops and the knights. And this game just kind of showcased how that is uh, more on my mind lately. Um, so this this was played maybe like four, four or five hours ago. It's very recent. And uh, so, oh. yeah, the bird variation of, of the Roy. Um, um, D3 is actually new for me a little bit. Uh, I think often I, I used to play like C3, which is okay, but yeah. I think D3 is technically slightly more accurate. Um, but th these moves don't matter so much, but you know, I, I'm not worried about all this stuff because that's just going to create holes and weaknesses. Um, he played a, whoa. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I'm just like, hello, hello, light squares. Um, yeah, looking. Promising. But so this is this is where I think you you might like my decisions, or maybe not. But um, so I played bishop g5 here, which might seem somewhat strange because he can just move the queen. Um, but I was trying to kind of exploit these weaknesses, and. Um, and uh, I, yeah, it's the first move I, I consider okay. to, I have to, yeah, yeah, it, it looks interesting. The knight goes quickly to the two. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Makes a lot of yeah. So, um, so I, I traded giving up the bishop. Um, but I, I, I just thought like my bishop isn't, this is technically a good, my good bishop, but, and I guess, you know, he could have other purposes, you know, batteries and so forth, but, um, I thought if I got rid of this knight and I put a knight on c4, or it might even bounce some elsewhere, that his light squared bishop can't really contest with all of this. If I have a knight here or my bishop gets out. Um, and uh, yeah, so That's I went. That position. I don't know if I'll trade. <laughs> on, on e7? Well, I think, I, I think it was an optimal. I think uh, there was. Um, I think the computer, I forget if it was here or not, but I think the computer wanted to, f oh, maybe it wasn't here, but it might've been in another move, but I think the bishop wanted to get the, the computer wanted to get the bishop out first and then bring the knight to c4. Um, okay, interesting. <laughs> and I, I think part of the reason is because if I just put the knight on c4 right now, well, I just bury my bishop. But oh, it, after here, probably after queen take bishop, b5. yeah, yeah, I think this was a little bit more accurate. So rook, rook b8, probably, and then knight d2. Um, yeah, and if he wants to trade the light square bishops, you're just going to get a good knight, versus, yeah, exactly. Well, not so great bishops, yeah. And I was actually thinking about that, um, like how I can get the bishop out first, but I forget if I was in time trouble here or not, or not time trouble, but like, I. Um, sorry, it's going quickly. There. Even after bishop b7, can't you still play bishop d5, maybe? What, you mean? I mean, even here, bishop b7, instead of knight c4, just bishop Oh, yeah, five. yeah, and so this is what, yeah, but yeah, you're right. The computer liked this too, and I didn't, what I didn't see was the follow-up of queen f3. So I, I yeah, saw this, and I thought, well, this is kind of, uh, I mean, even if he doesn't attack it immediately, I thought this is—I thought this might be a little weak long term. Like he can bring in his rooks, 
and then it's queen. Uh, I, yeah, but he doesn't have the pieces to attack it. Yeah, he only has a dark square bishop. Yeah, well, and it, it was yeah. also because I, I didn't see queen f3. So I thought yeah. this was a little bit hard to defend. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe this would be a problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so I can understand why the computer wanted to do that. Because otherwise, the way I did it, my bishop is just b buried behind my knight. Um, but I, I just kind of like that idea of um, just, well, first of all, immediately recognizing how weak this was and how great it would be to reposition, repurpose my knight um, to c4. Um, and then I think I... it. So you're not going to like the way this game ended, but... So I played knight e6, and... Then I played queen f3. I think here I still could have just played <laughs> bishop e5 for the same reasons as before. Yeah, it really looked like the the right redeployment. <laughs> yeah. Um, but still, I mean, I'm 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 loving my position here. Um, and then it, the draw. So it was. <laughs> you might be like, what? A good um, draw. Well. The, the reason is because um, I don't know why it's not showing the time. Oh, because I didn't import. Because oh. I, yeah, okay, I copied okay. the PGN. I didn't import the game directly. That's why. I just copied the PGN. Instead. Oh, okay. Yeah. But so if I remember correctly, though, he had six and a half minutes. And I, I had four and a half. And then he offered me a draw. And then I just thought... Uh, the two minutes with no increase the two minute difference i'm like oh, okay i'll just take a job <laughs> i i got a little bit worried <laughs> i'm a little i'm i'm kind of slow of a player if if it was equal time no way am i taking a draw like no way i i know white is better here <laughs> um yeah. can you play just I don't yeah. Know, G3 yeah. Maybe? yeah you can play anything you can play anything the computer said it's about plus two yeah, these bishops are just incredibly bad. <laughs> and I, I still have time to just, uh, I think, just go back ninety two. I still have time for this. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you you can arrange this anytime. And I and think these seats would even threaten queen takes g six. <laughs> yeah, and I, I can't remember I can if it... if e five was a suggestion by the computer. I can't remember if that was also playable. Yeah, I mean, the, the only thing it has to be handled with care because you open up the C6 bishop, yeah. but on its own, the bishop is not going to be. Mm. Oh, no, no, so I, at some point. No, I, I remember, like, uh, there's queen g3, but I think my the move I was going to play until my opponent talked me into a draw here was well, just, just rook e2. Just rook e2, rook a e1. Um, okay, I guess you can get away with it. Yeah, well, because black. I'm only worried about not getting this, hmm. this pump break. That that's the only thing I want yeah. to avoid. Yeah. That's why I wanted queen g3. If d5, I was thinking of well, jumping. So maybe knight knight back to e6 here then. That that stops that right. And um. Yeah. And then queen g3. Oh wait, no. That did yeah. that work? Yeah. Uh... You have this, oh right, yeah, so right, Bishop yeah. Bishop. I remember the engine yeah. suggesting that. Yeah, just happens exactly. to work it's out. It's working, and then maybe five. <laughs> or um, no, I, I was thinking Bishop, Bishop D five again. And Bishop D five. Yeah. Well, now you can't because of this. Um... Uh, right. Maybe five. Yeah, 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 E5. I'm not a fan, but. <laughs> it's not the move I want to make, that's for sure. We might have to go back. Uh, and can we can we go F4? I was thinking F4 immediately. Oh, wait, he just takes. Oh, yeah, he takes. Point, I see. Yeah. yeah, Knight C4 maybe. We need to go back and re group again well slowly making progress i guess if e5 is not the move okay. maybe we can do this yeah. maybe it wasn't as still really annoying for black this is terrible for black it's <laughs> it's 
kind of sad. Just have to sit and wait, but uh, the bishops are more or less useless. Yeah. The pawns are always exposed. The a5 pawn is permanently <laughs> uh, hmm. getting the rook on the stack on a8. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe he needs well, to put his... It was a very his, nice position in the game. He might need to put his queen on c7 or something. If he can. Or maybe he could... Uh, well, if he's got... Maybe he can go uh, bishop e5 to c7. To, like, eventually try to get that. So that his rook can yeah. do something. <laughs> you, you have to drive this away, though. And it's going to be rough. F4 is coming. Uh, it's it's a nice example of the bishop pair being quite useless. I like it. <laughs> yeah, um, where were they? I'll probably here. even use it. <laughs> just um, yeah, just, here it's just this yeah. little plan. Uh, yeah, and plus it it gets my knight. Maybe queen one. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's that's. Uh, it's funny because the old Tyler, this is, this is my old Tyler idea, but now I'm so positionally minded. I'm looking at, <laughs> looking at the, <laughs> you know, yeah, there's, there's the battery. Um, I don't know, just rookie eight Bishop. I don't know if this is a thing. Well, the good thing is that he can't play H6, so you can play Bishop G5 anyways, maybe bring the queen to F4. Yeah. And then there's also here. Well, no, not if the bishop was here. But yeah. I like your move. Bishop g5 for the knight it should looks very clear, so it can't be... It can't be bad. On the contrary, it looks, looks like the most principal thing to do. Yeah, and I just uh, thought, like, I didn't really need to look for tactics here, because if, he, if he's going to do this type of thing all game, then, <laughs> then I can just, you know, let him... That a was... Yeah. <laughs> well, <that> was strange. <laughs> yeah, it's strange. Yeah. Okay. Not convincing. But... Yeah. Nice position again. Yeah. Too bad it was a draw, but. Um... <laughs> yeah, you I... need to save more time to keep playing this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I spent a little bit too long uh, earlier on. So. Okay. Yeah. Thanks again. Um. Maybe next. Uh, maybe next Tuesday or. Thursday, whenever it's best for you, but yeah, yeah, we can make it work. Yeah, maybe we can uh, try the the webcam next time. Let's see if that works. Yeah, I, I will go back to the. Yeah, yeah and it, so we also that you can fit <laughs> in case you get a phone call too, right? <laughs> yeah, I didn't count on that. Yeah, but <laughs> but this actually works well though. Like the the lighting is good, and there's no there's no lag. Like it's there's no lag at all. Um, yeah, it, it, it's better than, yeah. than the build. Yeah, and it's camera. a tiny bit wider. <laughs> a tiny bit, like 10% more. <laughs> oh, yeah? You yeah. Noticed it? yeah, it is, yeah. I didn't notice. <laughs> yeah. You know, the other one is very it's square. Wide screen yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll let you go. And yeah, thanks for your time and the lesson. Thank you. Thanks, okay, Tyler. yeah.